Hey everybody, today we're talking about five things to do near Fairbanks in the winter. It could get down to negative 60 degrees, but don't let that scare you off from exploring this amazing place. First, we'll look at North Pole, Alaska, Santa's house. Santa's house sits in North Pole, Alaska, about 13 miles south of Fairbanks. Santa's house has been around for over 65 years. It's one of the top attractions in the interior of Alaska and has welcomed millions of visitors from all over the world. Don't forget to swing by the Antler Academy of Flying and Reindeer Games. This is a great place for kids to interact and feed the deer and have their picture taken with them to prove they truly did meet Santa's team. All right, let's go inside and check the place out. They do a great job decorating the place. It really gives us that Christmas feel and it's open year round. As you'd expect, there are Christmas decorations and knickknacks everywhere. Everything from Christmas tree ornaments to one of a kind handmade gifts that you can only get here. Like this handmade, fully functioning sleigh that you see. Another thing they do here is deliver custom letters from Santa, and they're actually postmarked from the North Pole. Take a look at these handmade, one-of-a-kind gifts. There are so many unique gift ideas in here, you can really spend hours and hours looking. Don't forget to watch until the end of the video to see a truly once in a lifetime bonus thing to do here in Alaska. While you're here, make sure to get your picture with Santa in the North Pole. Before you leave, swing by Santa's favorite shop and grab some chocolate or candies right from his favorite stash. Next up is the Fountainhead Antique Auto Museum. All right, we'll take a quick step back in time and look at these pre-World War II automobiles. Alongside all the vehicles is the vintage fashion collection from each era. This living museum is home to 95 pre-World War II automobiles, with 65 to 75 stunningly lit and staged rare automobiles at all times. This expansive collection encompasses horseless carriages, steamers, electric cars, speedsters, cycle cars, midget racers, and 30s classics. If you thought a Toyota Prius was one of the first hybrids, check out this Owen Magnetic from 1917. The museum has an extremely knowledgeable staff that's there just to answer questions for you, and they love talking to cars. The vehicles are displayed amazingly well. Just like this here, you see the mirror underneath that shows you the entire drivetrain and someone there to explain exactly how it functions. All but three of the museum's cars are operable and many get driven on a regular basis as weather permits. It's amazing the attention to detail that's taken to clean these cars after they're driven regularly. So if you're ready to come down and try to drive one of these yourself, then keep dreaming. But if you or someone in your family is into history, automobiles, or fashion, then come down to the Fountainhead Antique Auto Museum and check it out. Wait till the end to see a bonus event that you can only do in Alaska.
winter drives in Alaska are absolutely amazing. Winter solstice is December 21st. That marks the longest day of winter. Here in Fairbanks, Alaska, that means you only have about three and a half hours of daylight. With that being said, you'll really need to get outside and take advantage of it. When I say daylight, I use that loosely. It's actually more like having a five hour long sunset. Whether you're just getting outside to go on a drive or you're using the drive to get to a location to go snow machining or to do one of the many other winter activities around Fairbanks. It's really important just to get out and see this amazing place while there's some light out. Speaking of outdoor winter activities, snowshoeing and skiing are a great thing to pass the time to get you outside and get some exercise. There are so many places to cross country ski local here in Fairbanks. Chena Lake Recreation Area is one of those places. There are lots of trails over there to ski ranging from 3 to 12 mile loops. The University of Alaska Fairbanks has over 25 miles of these trails. If that's not enough, check out Creamer's Field and every golf course in the area. Now let's talk snowshoeing. The possibilities with snowshoeing are absolutely endless. There are so many places to go, so many things to see, that I could do a video on snowshoeing itself. Snowshoeing is exhausting, but it's well worth the reward of getting to the top of a mountain and getting to view the endless frozen terrain all around you. If you're new to snowshoeing, I'd recommend to start off small with something local in town. Then you can work up to getting to the top of a mountain and overlooking terrain like this. A great winter hike to take the family on is to Kastner Ice Caves. It's a couple hours south of Fairbanks. It's a beautiful drive in the winter. And it's an easy three mile round trip out to the caves and back. The trip doesn't always require snowshoes, but they're nice to have when the trail isn't really packed down. The hike is so easy that you frequently see people pulling their toddlers in sleds. We did a whole video just on the ice caves and we'll put a link to it up in the top right corner here. The World Ice Art Championships definitely don't disappoint. This year it's open from February 15th to March 19th. Don't forget to wait to the end of the video to see a truly one-of-a-kind experience that you can only do in Alaska. It's really a great experience to walk through the forest and see all these amazing ice sculptures. After you're finished admiring all the ice sculptures, they have a huge area set up with games and slides all made out of ice. You have to check it out. Oh, look out.
does. If you look close here, you can see lights built into the ice sculptures, which light the whole place up at night. Extreme detail doesn't really come out in the video, but you have to see this in person. And it's even cooler at night. If that piqued your interest, let me tell you all about it. Arctic Man is many things. For many, it's a party, a festival, a swap meet, but most of all, Arctic Man is one of the most extreme races known to man. The Arctic Man is a race for teams of two skilled competitors that test the strength of the athlete and the horsepower of the snowmobile. It's said that courage and training are essential elements for this team. The Arctic Man is one of the world's toughest downhill ski races and an exciting snowmobile race all in one. The skier begins at an elevation of 5,800 feet and drops 1,700 feet in less than two miles. The skier hits speeds of over 50 miles an hour when he or she reaches the narrow canyon at the bottom where they meet up with their snowmobiling partner. The snowmobile and the skier have to match speeds of around 50 to 60 miles an hour when the skier grabs a rope that's hanging off the back of the snowmobile. The skier then gets pulled to the next summit at speeds up to 86 miles an hour. Once the skier reaches the summit, they'll drop down the other side another 1,200 feet to the finish line. At the Arctic Man, you go fast or you go home. It's truly the ultimate adrenaline rush for spectators and competitors alike. The event averages around 15,000 spectators from all around the world. We really hope you enjoyed the video. Please like and subscribe if you did.